Hi, this is Dr. Kevin Kirby. I want to talk to you today about how foot orthoses work and function and how they can be used by the experienced clinician in treating a multitude of foot and lower extremity mechanically related pathologies. First of all, foot orthoses are nothing more than an inchy medical device that's been designed to alter the forces, plantar reaction forces, their magnitudes, their plantar locations, and their temporal or timing patterns underneath the human foot. As you know, the human is one of the few bipedal animals, uh, so that the two feet that we have as humans, allowing us to walk, stand, run, hop, skip, jump, and play the multitude of sports we have in our society, is critically important to having these activities done in a optimal fashion in order to prevent injury. In our roles as podiatrists or other foot health clinicians, in using custom foot orthoses, what we're doing is trying to alter the plantar reaction forces or ground reaction forces acting underneath the foot in order to favorably alter the internal forces and moments that are, occur within the foot and also the plantar reaction forces that are causing any plantar foot symptoms in our patient's feet. Let's go to a little background first. Why is the human foot important? And why can foot orthoses, even though they seem like they're just bent pieces of plastic, how can they make such a difference for people? Number one, the human foot is subjected to greater external forces than any other part of the human body. In walking and standing, for example, standing, we have half a body weight. In walking, peak forces reach 1.25 times body weight. In slow running, peak forces are approximately 2.5 times body weight. In faster running, three times the body weight. And in sprinting, ground erection forces can reach up to five times body weight in world-class sprinters. In high jumping, ground erection forces have been measured to be as high as eight times body weight. Therefore, there's no other part of our bodies other than the plantar feet that accept such great prolonged magnitudes of ground reaction forces multiple times of our body weight than any other part of the body. Because of this, slight alterations in the surface underneath our foot can cause extremely large changes in the external moments acting across the joint axes of the foot and also the internal forces that are present within the ligaments, tendons, muscles, joints, and cartilage of our feet and lower extremities. When we make foot orthoses for patients, let's say for a posterior tibial tendonitis, uh, we can alter the shape of the orthosis, whether this is a customized over-the-counter insole or a custom foot orthosis that's made from a cast of the foot or a scan of the foot. We can design these using Newtonian, the laws of Newtonian mechanics to uh, alter the forces through the plantar foot so that the posterior tibial tendon will have less force going through it and the patient can eventually have improved gait pattern, decrease pain over time, and, and hopefully heal from the injury. Because of this, we can then use this, this, this device we have, this in medical device we have, a custom foot orthosis, and use a multitude of design features in order to uh, alter the mechanics of the foot and uh, treat these patients uh, that we see in our offices uh, using um, these foot orthoses without uh, any sequelae that is significant and with a relative minimum of cost compared to other types of treatment that uh, would be offered to them. 
One of the key factors in my becoming interested in foot orthos therapy is that when I was a 19 year old college distance runner and getting injured every uh, two to three months by running anywhere between 70 to 90 miles per week, I had a pair of custom foot orthos made for me uh, that greatly affected my ability to run farther with less chance of injury. Uh, once I got foot orthosis at the age of 19, I didn't get injured for another two years after that, which was much better than the every three month injury I was having at the time. Because of this, when I went into podiatry school, one of the fields that I became very interested in was biomechanics and especially the biomechanics of foot orthosis. And this is why I'm coming to you here to pass on my knowledge I've gained over 35 years of podiatric practice and teaching uh, foot and lower extremity biomechanics and foot orthosis therapy to podiatrists and other foot and health clinicians over the past, uh, those past 35 years. When I was taught uh, about foot orthosis in podiatry school, the prevailing theory that was used uh, to teach uh, foot orthosis therapy was that at proposed by uh, Dr. Merton Root and his colleagues uh, that wrote the books that are now classics. Uh, and this involved this subtelar joint neutral theory where uh, it was thought that holding the subtelar joint in neutral or making the foot function closer to the neutral position would be advantageous and should be used as a way to design uh, foot orthosis. One of the problems with this approach I found over the years, especially as I went into my biomechanics fellowship from 1984 to 1985, where I was able to spend a great amount of time observing, uh, thinking, and uh, doing experimentation with foot orthoses, is that the measurements that were proposed by uh, Dr. Root and his colleagues that involved uh, the subtelligent neutral theory and his examination techniques did not always correlate with the patient's symptoms. And over time, I started developing uh, a way to measure the subtelar joint axis uh, by palping the bottom of the foot. And this uh, then led to my paper published in 1987, where I specifically uh, described a technique where we could uh, measure the plantar location of the subtelar joint axis. Later on after that, I became interested in this idea of that many of the injuries that we saw, we couldn't use external measurements in order to determine their cause. And then I came up, I came up with an idea of this, that we should be thinking more like engineers, where an engineer will not just consider the external forces acting on the structure, or in other words, the plantar reaction forces or ground reaction forces acting on the plantar foot, but also consider the uh, internal forces uh, uh, of that structure. So the engineer may be considering a bridge, he may be modeling or determining the forces going through the internal structures and the stresses and strains in those structures to determine what part of that bridge may fail next. And I had suggested uh, uh, back in the 1990s that we should be thinking more as an engineer trying to discover what the internal forces are and how in the uh, foot in the structural components of the foot and low extremity and how we can use foot orthoses to favorably modify those internal forces acting on the tendons muscles ligaments fascia joint and uh, cartilage in the foot in order to uh, reduce these forces and allow proper healing and pain free uh, weight bearing activities. And this led with McPoyle's, uh, Tom McPoyle's uh, and Gary Hunt's paper on tissue stress theory, which now is the predominant uh, view in many countries as to how we should properly design foot orthoses. Rather than concentrating on subtelar or neutral, we now concentrate on uh, finding out what part of the foot is most painful, what the diagnosis is, and how best can we design those foot orthoses to reduce the stress on that tissue. So we've gone from when I was trained 
in podiatry school from 1979 to 1983 for, from this uh, root uh, biomechanical model uh, using a septuagint neutral that relied mostly on taking measurements and trying to have the foot function in septuagint neutral. And now uh, most of us are going toward using this tissue stress theory in order to design, better design our orthoses to reduce the stress on the injured structure so that we can allow more normal healing to occur over time, reduce the uh, external force or internal force on that injured structure so that the injury can heal and a uh, patient can lead their pain-free weight-bearing lives more readily. So this is my first video on this topic and I'll try to do uh, further topics as time allows in order to in introduce all of you to the uh, functions of foot orthoses and uh, how we can better design foot orthoses in order to produce better outcomes for our patients who suffer from mechanically related foot and lower extremity pathologies. Thank you.